You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians from across the nation, answering your questions about your pet. If this is your first time joining us, thank you for listening. Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at BarkandWag.com under the Podcast tab. That's Bark, the letter N, Wag.com. Today, we're talking to Ames Grobstein about designer dogs. Dr. Grobstein is a veterinarian from Door, Michigan. Ames, thank you for taking the time to talk about designer dogs. My girlfriend has a puggle. It barks like a beagle and snores like a pug. What the heck is a designer dog? Well, that's a good question, Polly. (laughs) It's actually a mutt. It's a cross between two or more purebred dogs that some great marketing person has deemed to be a breed and then they sell it for a lot of money and the general public is fooled into thinking this is a purebred dog when it's actually just a mutt. So, so yep, so they're not uh, considered an AKC. No, if you go to akc.org, there's the list of all the AKC breeds and there are no puggles or Labradoodles, or Golden Doodles, et cetera, in that breed. I, I, they, they're trying to make a registry, and I looked at it online the other day, and there was probably 300 designer breeds they put on there, which are all just plain fake. Mm. And it's pretty scary, really. And so how did it all begin? Like, what? what I know a lot of my girlfriends have dogs that are like a lab, Labradoodle that – you know, you're not supposed to have any type of allergy or hair or, you know, so I, I'm just wondering how it all began. Well, it happened because when you do cross two purebred dogs, you get what's called hybrid vigor, which is uh, best, usually the best of the two breeds that you're crossing. And they're stronger and usually live longer than the purebreds. So, you know, one person got a cross between a lab and a giant poodle and it didn't shed but the truth is lab shed so if you're putting 50 percent of lab into a dog there's 50 percent chance it's going to shed and most of them do Hmm. shed so you know if you really want a non-breeding non-shedding dog go to the akc.org find the nine breeds that are known to be non-shedders and get one of those okay okay so is there what's the so what is the difference between a designer dog and a mutt, not nothing. No, absolutely okay. nothing. You don't know. I mean, the, the only thing you know is the, what the parents breeds are, which gives you a hint of what the dog might be or what kind of dog it might be, but you don't know <laughs> without knowing. So, sorry. My dog just, just I saw think, a I think, uh, my dog just saw the garbage truck because he's barking in my daughter's room. <laughs> <laughs> They're fun. Yeah. So do these, are they considered, I mean, almost like a hybrid dog. Do they have the same type of problems, genetic problems as a mutt or a purebred? Well, once, you know, in any purebred breed, the, the responsible breeders breed towards the qualities of those breed standards that you can find in the AKC. So if you want to be have a herding dog or a lap dog, you know, you go to that breed. Once you start crossing those dogs, you don't know what exactly kind of dog you're going to get. It's more of a guess, just like going to the pound and getting a puppy from there, which you're just guessing on what kind of dog it might be Mm -hmm. so they breed for qualities or just really looks in the designer breeds and they skip some of the important traits and so as a vet do you see a lot of designer dogs coming through your practice yeah one of the funnier ones i've seen recently is they call it a bernadoodle and it's a cross between a bernie's mountain dogs which is a giant breed dog and a miniature poodle which is obviously a miniature dog so this dog came in and the lady paid $3,000 for this mutt, and it was it's a giant breed with short legs. So it looks like a burner, but it just has short legs, and it's going to have, you know, joint problems and arthritic problems, you know, oh. just terrible. Oh, that's too bad. By the time it's old enough, because it was a, it is. 
And she would have paid 4000 if it had white on its forehead. And I'm like, how are people fooled by this? You know, your friend with the puggle, you know, uh, that is one of the worst crossbreds I know of. Because they do have both terrible qualities. They got the worst qualities of a pug and the worst qualities of a beagle. Their dog is named Bandit. And it is a garbage surfer. I mean, right. your beagle. Yeah. I mean, they have to lock the pantry. They have to keep the garbage can. They have this beautiful kitchen and they have to keep the garbage can on top of uh, the counter because the dog has figured out how to unlock the lock that uh, secures the garbage. Right. And beagle, beagles are hunting dogs and they need a great amount of exercise. So I would say 95% of the puggles that come through my practice are obese. Right. Because well, people I, want a pug. Yeah. So I think uh, Bandit's issue is that it's got the pug, doesn't like to go outside, only likes to sleep, right. and then is a total counter surfer, garbage eater, you know, barker. Right, and unless, unless you work so hard, like putting the garbage on the counter, you've got an obese dog. Yeah, yeah. So uh, anyway, so what are things that we can do to, you know, watch out for this or, you know, be, you know, more aware of some of the issues that these designer breeds have? I mean, it's really just education. I mean, it's even moved on to um, the, the the breeders, you know, it's it's marketing. They're there to sell, mm -hmm. you know. And if they can market the right way. So it's all about, you know, this podcast is wonderful because it's educational. Like I had a client that last week that asked me what I thought of the English golden retriever. So they've moved on to changing the names to just doing an offshoot on a, a real breed and saying my English golden retriever is better than the regular golden retriever. And they're selling that as a, as a new breed. So it's really just being smart about, you know, knowing that breeders are there to sell dogs. They're not there to make, you know. Okay. So I guess the other question is, I, uh, you know, I guess it is to be, have our listeners be informed that if they are receiving papers with a mixed breed, this you're, is, it's really it, false. And, uh, that org is a very simple way to just, you know, just figure out if you're getting fooled or scammed by a breeder. Are there any other points that you'd like to bring up? Every time a breeder breeds a dog, uh, one pound puppy is not getting adopted and getting euthanized. Mm. So, you know, just to, if we can stop these breeders from being so, uh, you know, ha making it, we make it so easy for them by buying these dogs and, and uh, promoting them that uh, so many pound puppies are euthanized and we just need to go to the pound and it's cheap, you know, a couple hundred bucks and you've got a spayed vaccinated dog rather than, you know, having to pay $3,000 or more for a dog that you have to now start and do everything with. So thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us about designer breeds. You know, dogs are not to be disposed of you know, like old toasters and they, they're, they are living creatures. And I think it's very important that you uh, talked about this message. So we look forward to having you back in the future. Well, thank you, Polly. It's been a pleasure. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15 minute vet talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.